think, dis, bis, you know, despite the streets and the, and the 2.5 million who joined your virtual march, that there's the political will where it's needed to actually make this shift? Because it is a shift in, in distribution of resources. It will have to be where we not only be in the streets, but we are going to have to be in the voting booths. And that's why we're also building power. We're in a moment where the people are going to have to change the political uh, atmosphere, just like people that went across the Edmunds Pettus Bridge. None of the politicians wanted to deal with voting rights. The president wanted, didn't want to deal with it, but the people forced a change in the political context. And that wasn't even in an election year. We have a greater possibility because we're in the middle of an election year. Now, it doesn't mean go do, vote in November and then leave and go home. It means that we have to build power and we have to show people what we did on Saturday, it wasn't people talking about the poor. We've got thousands of texts back that said, we saw ourselves. We said, look, America, you must see yourself. These five interlocking injustices are affecting a white farmer couple in Kansas, just like it's affecting coal miners in Kentucky, just like it's affecting fast workers in North Carolina and, and people down in the Delta, Mississippi. And the more we show that to the people, the possibility of change. Now, the politicians, are going to have to understand what this moment is. They're still playing with it. They don't understand yet this is the moment, and they better. Because if we can't fix these issues in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of the poverty that's coming, that's going to be added, another 15,000 people in unemployment, if we can't face these issues of raising living wages and getting health care and dealing with poverty, God help us as a country. This is the moment. This is the moment that we must build this movement. And we're what we're saying is we're not going anywhere. We're going to be at the voting booth. Whoever wins, we're going to be still in their face. We're going to keep pushing. Because what other choice do we have? As one guy said on Saturday, our backs are against the wall. We have no other choice but to fight. And then lastly, we've got to decide in this country, do we believe in our first declaration? And that is life. Because every regressive policy, denial of health care, denial of living wages, even denial of voting rights, has what I call a death measurement. People die when we don't have health care. People die when they don't have living wages. People die when we have voter suppression and people use voter suppression to get in office. And then once they get in office, they protect corporate polluters and they deny health care and they block living wages. If we're going to deal with the death of George Floyd, as we should, we're going to have to deal with the deaths that we don't see on camera, but happen every day to the tune of 700 poor people dying every day from poverty. We have to deal with the death measurement. Otherwise, we don't mean what we say when we say we, we offer life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.